YAML is here for Power Apps and it's making it easier than ever to copy and paste and share snippets. But are you using it wisely? Now recently in Power Apps, we gained the ability to click on any object, whether that be an entire screen or an object like this, and we can copy the code. Behind the scenes, this code is in YAML. And if you don't know what YAML is and it sounds like a foreign language to you, you can check out this video that I have that explains exactly what it is in the ins and outs. Now with this capability, I can copy this code and now I can use that wherever I want. It can be in this same app in just a different screen. So I can go to paste and paste that code in and have all of that available here. This could be in a different app in the same tenant, or it could be in a totally different tenant. I could go put this out on GitHub and any one of you could go and paste this YAML into your Power App and it would work. So it really makes sharing samples like this extremely easy because we don't have to necessarily go through the hurdles of having to package all this up as a solution, import the solution and all that if we just want to get a simple piece of logic like that over into an app. But this leads to my question, are you using this wisely? Just because this makes it way easier to be able to paste these snippets in doesn't necessarily mean we should just start pasting these YAML snippets all over the place. And it really comes down to maintainability. So it's my advice if you see a really cool YAML snippet, like maybe some of these that I just added, and you wanna use that across many different applications or screens in your environment, you are way better off pasting those into a component library. Components are a feature in Power Apps that are meant for reusability and maintainability. They give you a way to have a collection of different hand-built controls or snippets that you can take and use in multiple places, but you have a single source of truth where you make updates to that code. In make.powerapps.com, we have a section for component libraries. And if you don't see that, you can go to the more section and discover all and scroll down and pin that component libraries to your left navigation. So a component library is exactly what it sounds like. It's a library of different components that you can then go and use in your Power Apps. To create a new component library, you just go up here and say new component library. So I'll just create a collection of different snippets here. And now we can start building out our components. So we have a component tab right here and it creates an initial component for us called component one. So say you're out browsing the Power Platform snippet repo and you go into the Power Apps section and maybe you see this snippet here for an SVG donut. Seems pretty cool. You'd like to add that visual into your app, maybe multiple applications. So what we can do is go over to the source, go to the YAML and we can copy this text. And then we'll go over here to this component library we're setting up. So first of all, we want to rename the component so it is something relevant. So we'll click on these three dots and we'll rename this to SVG donut. And then within the component itself, we can paste in that code. Now, since components are meant to be reusable, we need to create some specific properties to pass in inputs to this component. So just like when we add in this image control, we can go to the properties panel and we can click that dropdown and we have all of these different inputs that we can pass in like the image, the visibility, the color and all of that. We can do the same thing for these components we build. We can define custom properties. So for something like this donut, it expects that we have a dividend value and a divisor value to fill in the shading. So I'm going to need a component property for each of those. So that when someone adds this into the Power App, they can simply fill out those properties with those number values and the component is automatically updated. So to do that, select your component and go over here to the custom properties tab and add a new custom property. We'll just give it a name and we'll call this dividend. And then we can choose the property type, whether it's an input or output. And most of the time, you're probably going to be doing an input like we are right here where we're passing data into your component. But you can also do output. So if you need to take data outside of your component and pass it to controls outside of that. And then we can choose the data type here. So whether you're trying to capture some text, maybe tabular data, or in the case of this dividend, a number. And then we just click create. So there is one custom property down. We'll go in and add one more for the divisor. And this will also be a number input. Now that we have that information, if we click on our component and go to the dropdown, we'll see those custom properties highlighted here. So I can go into those. We see it has a default value of 100. I could change that to something like, we'll say 35. And I'll leave the divisor at 100. Now, last piece of the puzzle, we can reference these properties that we just created in the individual elements in the component. So we copy that YAML snippet, which is just an image control. And in this image control, in the image property, we have a little bit of SVG code and we have some placeholders here where right here we want to put in the dividend value. 
So we can reference that custom property by just putting in the name of your component, SVG donut dot dividend. And then right here, we want the divisor. So we can say SVG donut dot divisor. And then same thing right here. So I'll just do this a couple more times for the dividend and for the divisor as well. Now you'll see as soon as I type that in, there we go, we have this nice visual. So this is ready to go plug and play into a variety of applications. And if at any time I wanna make changes to this, I just come to this component library, make the changes, and those can get pushed out to anywhere that I'm referencing this component. So now we've taken a YAML snippet, we put it in a component so that we can reuse this across multiple places inside of our environment. So we're gonna save this and we'll publish the component library itself. And I'll show you how easy it is to use this in an application and how we can make a change. So I have one application open here for an employee award system. So we'll just go to the screen that we wanna add this in on. We'll click on this plus button here on the left-hand side. And then we'll see this icon here to get more components. This is going to show us all the different component libraries that we have in this environment. So here is the snippet one that we just created and I can expand that out. And in a component library, you can have multiple different components. So I can select the individual ones that I want. Now we only have the SVG donut right now. So I'll just highlight that and we'll say import. And now that's accessible here in my application to use. Now we'll have this new library components section, which I can expand out. And there it is, looks just like any other control that I can use. So I can click to add that onto my canvas and it's automatically filled out here with those custom properties that I defined in the component. So I had a default value for the dividend of 35 and for the divisor of 100. And if I change this at all, so I'll change this say to 80, we see the color coding is updated. I can go into a totally different application here and I can add a new screen and I can do the same exact thing. So I'll go to the import components I'll look at the snippets and I'll add the donut there. But what if I notice something is off here and I'm already using this in two different spots? That means I have to go update it in two different places if I had just copied that YAML code directly. But since I put that in a component, what I can do is go back to my component library and make the changes here. So I can take a look at some of the colors here. So maybe I wanna do a little bit of swapping. So I actually want the gray color to be up here. And instead of the green, let's go with a red. So I'll take this color right here and we'll replace it like so. So I changed it here at the component level so I can save and republish this component library. And now if I go back into either of those applications where I'm using that component, you'll notice this message at the top. Component library updates are available. So I can check review and it lets me know what was updated and when. And I can choose this update button and it will automatically apply that change to this component. So I didn't have to go and manually do all that configuration. It just let me know as the owner of this application that there is an update and I can apply it. And then I just save this application and I'm good to go. Same thing with this other app where we added that component. I have the same notification so I can review and update. And now I have the latest changes. And you might be wondering, why doesn't it automatically push that out? Well, it's for safety and security, just in case something gets pushed out that might have any breaking changes. You can test it first in the application, make sure everything is working correctly, and then go republish the app that you're using it in and be assured that it doesn't accidentally break anything. But this does save a lot of time because I didn't have to go into each of these places where I'm using that YAML snippet and update and make all those changes to the colors and all that. I did it in the one spot at the component level. I tell the other apps to accept those updates and I'm good to go. So hopefully this gave you some ideas about utilizing YAML snippets wisely in Power Apps. Again, you can always simply copy and paste, but it's my strong recommendation if you're using it in more than one spot or you anticipate that you will, leverage the built-in capability of components to make this reusable. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments. Are you using YAML snippets yet? Do you plan to use them? What do you think about this approach? I'd love to hear it. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and click that subscribe button so you'll be notified for future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.